Well, it is closed on the warrant last night. Um, it's up to the retirement board how they want to. Oh, mistake. It just didn't occur to me. <laughs> I was taken up ahead of time to put it for meeting. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll I'm just dying to say the same thing. Sorry, I can't. All right, we're done. So, we'll go to the FY20 budget transfers. Yeah. Go to, you know, the uh, you go to uh, the page that says Article 4. <clears throat> general fund wages and expenses uh, to give you an overview and you know, just for anyone listening now we tried to do a couple things we normally wouldn't have done this fast because you're down to one financial form and as you'll find out there's some agenda items on it that aren't normally there they're going to take some time so we thought to do this work a little early just so you can become familiar with it and it is a little more tentative certainly uh, I'll circle back to capital and debt later, but just to look at Article 4, budget transfers, um, we have a surplus in health insurance premiums. That number that's put in there is just a plug figure that happens to balance all the others. It could be larger if it needs to be up to some point. Um, capital and debt, again, I'll defer our discussion for a short while. Public services has consolidated some positions. We actually had a meeting again today, and I don't know what the final figure will be, but there will be some surplus available. Um, the thing that we want to be careful about is what's the surplus available this year and what's a sustainable surplus for future years. Um, they're going to have more than 20 this year, but I don't think it's sustainable. Um, they have three requests for expenses. And the first is an Eaton Lakeview traffic study. Um, a developer has promised the 20000 but there is litigation now, so it's not clear when the litigation will clear up and when the developer is able to pay. And, you know, as we get closer to town meeting and hopefully October financial form, this, this will be a little clearer. But it could come down to the fact, does the town want to front the money and do it and then have the developer pay later in order to get the results? So, you know, stay tuned, I guess. Is, is the so 20 of that 60 would be reimbursed, <clears throat> perhaps? The 20 could be reimbursed for that first item. That's, that's the thought. And it could be that, um, you know, with your help, we just decide we're not even going to do anything until this situation is resolved and the developer pays. But you know, we had anticipated doing this work this winter or early spring, so we just have to put that in as a plug figure. Um, <coughs> not, not, not it? Oh, no. sorry. <laughs> other, other copies? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I can give you mine. You come sit here. <laughs> it's just a budget transfer. Um, the second one is Birch Meadow Design Recreation Committee has asked if, uh, if you'll all recall, there is a uh, plug figure of I think it's a million dollars for improvements to Birch Meadow aside from lighting. Um, and that's been a plug figure for at least three years. And the Birch Meadow, I'm sorry, the Rec Committee has finally uh, moved around to, uh, they have some draft plans, but now they want to actually design the work. And when they design the work, then you get a much better cost cost estimate. So they have conceptual designs that we're able to get done for little or no money. Uh, now they want to ask town meeting for some serious money. Um, I don't know if that work would be done in time for April town meeting and the current budget process. Um, we'll talk about that when we get back to capital. And then uh, I'm told this is more of a staff-led um, thing at this point. Uh, an open space plan consultant. Um, the town is required to do an open space plan on a regular basis. I think it's 10 years. Um, I, you know, again, when we come back to you in our, the October financial forum, if that one is moving forward, I'll find out what other boards and committees are involved because they haven't been yet. Uh, but that's a placeholder. <clears throat> There's a couple of public safety expenses. Um, the, the dispatch has been using a uh, medical director, there's a, there's a doctor locally not in Reading that they have used um, for a period of time. What a medical director does is review 
a sample of the dispatch calls and see if the dispatchers have acted appropriately. So it's almost like an audit. Um, I'm doing it for free and it's not free anymore. So this would be uh, you know, a new annual charge of about $7,000. Is um, that a requirement? Yes, it is. There's a uh, request for more money for the police cruisers, and we'll let the police come and describe why. Uh, but there is in the current year's budget, the funding was requested for three cruisers, and somehow the request for three cruisers is almost one cruiser short financially. So I saw the figures, they're like in the mid-50s, 55000 for a cruiser fully outfitted. I know some of that has to do with the price of steel and the tariffs going on. If any of you looked at cars, you'll, you'll understand. Um, but, but we'll get you more precise figures. I, I was tempted not to do this now, but it seems like you ought to know, because something probably will be coming. The alternative to asking for more, more money is only buying two cruises this year. So we'll have to figure that out. And uh, police cruisers are not in the capital plan. They are an expense every year because they don't last five years as is required by capital. They only last about three. The police be safe floor plan is a, is it only school or just school only? Partly school, okay. Um, they are required to have floor plans and this is an update um, to the floor plans they current have, currently have for all the schools. It's a relatively small. Um, public Works, you'll recall we have a, a town forest revolving fund with no money in it. Um, I can't remember, but I think you also heard of uh, a town forest thinning project many years ago and still been discussed. Now the town forest committee is moving very forward on it. <coughs> they know there will be some expense involved. They don't know what revenue they'll get. Um, I talked to town council and this has to really be treated as an expense. For instance, we couldn't ask the town meeting to put 25000 into the revolving fund because the revolving fund can only accept revenues from sale of timber, unless we amended that. So this would be a placeholder again. It's possible that they will need $25,000 to do the project, and then revenue will follow and go into the revolving fund. Um, and again, the town forest committee will have to uh, write you a message. There's two parts of the forest that need trimming. One is this ring in the middle, which <coughs> Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts are more familiar with, and dog walkers. And that has to be done no matter what, and that's a cost of around eight or 10,000. And then the other is more optional. It's how much do we want to think. Um, and again, there's, there's no current estimate on what revenues might come in. We thought this one might be a net up at this level, right? Five or six years ago, we thought it would be a net up. It's not anymore. If we were only growing <laughs> steel up there instead of timber, it would be. But <laughs> apparently, that's not the, not the way it's working. Um, and you can see the balance of all this is, is debt and capital, which I'll get to next. I, I do want to just mention one more thing. Uh, I guess it is part of capital, but there will be a water transfer request that I'll come back to that. Um, for debt, I don't know what the best way, or sorry, for debt and capital, I don't know what the best way to approach this is. Um, there's a longer term, bigger picture memo in here, but there's also November requests. So how does FinCom want to hear that story? I want to hear the long story and then happen to cover the November? I, yeah, I seem to think seeing okay. the big picture in there. So there's a memo in your packet on capital projects overview, it's a few pages. Um, sort of a starting point is that um, this capital plan in front of you is not balanced uh, on purpose. There is a surplus uh, annually. It's, it's a little bit lumpy, but it's meant to be about $400,000. Um, and in FY21, right now, it's 426000 for what that's worth. Uh, and that was allowed to allow for a discussion in the community, however that's defined. <coughs> what is our priorities about capital? And I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, but before we get to that, I want to talk to you a little about the capital plan that you know, is underlying. <coughs> uh, April town meeting had authorized debt. 
we had intended to borrow in May, most likely June. Um, we decided not to borrow for a variety of reasons, the main one being we didn't need the cash as soon as we thought. Uh, Turf 2 didn't require any cash until either August or September, and we were planning to you know, pay it out sooner than that. Uh, and then in addition, it um, looked like interest rates were coming down. So we delayed, and what towns are allowed to do within a fiscal year is to borrow internally. So we have cash flow, we have free cash, and the board of uh, the select board is the authority that can authorize the treasurer to borrow internally. Um, that means you're not earning interest on that money, and you're also not paying a cost. So you know you have to be careful to make sure it's uh, economic, and it was economic. So we are borrowing internally, or we have the authorization as cash flow is needed for some of these projects. Um, Sorry, so when you say uh, borrow internally, like using the free cash? Borrowing from ourselves, effectively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. basically from free cash? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that'll allow us, we can do that all the way to next June 30th. <clears throat> I think the plan, and this is somewhat contingent on Sharon's work in the DOR, is to borrow this fall. Uh, before November town meeting, or, or at least before December, at which point um, we won't need to do that internal borrowing anymore. So instead of borrowing in June, we might borrow in, let's say, November. Um, that's actually a big difference um, because in municipal finance, the typical default is you make one capital, uh, one principal payment a year and two interest payments, and your uh, principal payment is approximately a year from when you borrow. Mm -hmm. So if we borrow in June, we would owe one principal payment in this fiscal year. If we borrow in November, we will not owe one principal payment in this fiscal year, and we'll only owe one interest payment instead of two. So because of that, there's about 750000 <coughs> of what was approved as debt service that is no longer needed in the general fund and you'll also see some uh, similar in water. So back on the budget transfer page you'll see our request to decrease the debt service budget by 750000 and it's only a timing risk. Um, these, these two general fund issues were 10-year borrowings so we're moving money from year 1 to year 11. It's not like we're not paying it out eventually. But given the shape of the capital plan, that's actually advantageous to be able to push it out to when we seem to have a lot of money available. Um, for two reasons, one, because we have demands in capital, and, and two, to keep the 5% FinCom policy intact. Um, we want to replace more than 750,000, and that number is fluid. And that's where you'll see a list that um, is in November, which we may as well get to go over the items. <coughs> That's on the next page, the second page of the memo. <coughs> We're proposing today 877000 of capital. I'm sure that number will change, and I'll come back to that. <coughs> um, as I mentioned at April Town Meeting, we are... What page are uh, Well, they're not numbered, so it's this one. Okay. The one with the little block. Like, <laughs> well, it's it says, actually two pages. It says FY20 capital yeah, update with you. some TBDs on the top. Yeah. Um, in April town meeting, I mentioned that almost for sure we'd be back in November and ask for public safety radios. That was a future scheduled um, item, but because of the building security project, we knew it would be advantageous to do it at the same time or a little bit sooner than the building security work. So we're moving that up. We're asking it to go from FY22 to this November and increasing it by 50000 um, the rest of the improvements are, I suppose, not quite as urgent, uh, generally. Uh, Coolidge Middle School has an HVAC unit that would be better if it could be replaced now instead of next year, so it's not a big change for 225000 There's 112000 of various school server room upgrades, and that is related to, although it's not a security item, it is related to all the technology that will be coming into the schools. Just seemed like a good idea to do this now instead of after the fact when I wish we had. There's a couple of other uh, pieces of equipment that I really don't have to go over. And we did get some uh, money in the state budget for our human health services fans, which we're certainly appreciative for. Um, so the concept again is to, since we're not needing the money for debt, to replace it with capital. And I did get a uh, very nasty email early this week from our DPW director 
that said a two hundred and fifteen thousand dollar truck scheduled for replacement next July just died. So you may have to see a change. And she uh, outlined how they can't not have it, and they could lease something in the meanwhile, and it costs quite a bit. So we'll have to discuss that. And I haven't had a chance, <clears throat> but you might see that, and you might have to see some of these substituted out because um, this is contingent. The way it's set up to not use free cash to use health insurance as the buffer uh, and that's because um, we cannot be 100 percent certain that the dor will certify free cash in time for the november town meeting uh, i just asked sharon before the meeting and you know 80 percent chance that they will but if they don't we have to be careful how much we spend because we have to borrow from ourselves and rearrange them ourselves um, i'm pretty sure we'll have a very healthy free cash so if it's possible to use free cash you might see a bigger request in capital and it's it's even conceivable that in october we'll ask you for maybe a big number and then at town meeting floor have to cut it down if free cash isn't available or we could do vice versa whatever you prefer um, now, most, um yeah. sort of checkers with the debt service and capital what was the driver that we that the debt we knew was going to shift and that and that was because we delayed borrowing we know we don't need the money this year okay. and we need so it we in. deliberately pulled this stuff into to balance yes yeah yeah, okay, yeah. yeah I, which which was yeah no i mean you I mean some of this i think we'd ask for given that this funding available i know the um you know the radios and for police and dispatch it would be very advantageous to get it now even compared to asking for it in april right away and there the rest you could argue is not as urgent right so it's more about balancing yeah yeah um <clears throat> that's kind of the big picture and the immediate picture um you you know the capital plans in here again because of things like the uh email i got from jane early in the week things may change they always do capital plans never stay still um, and you know, I'll certainly give you an update before the November financial forum. Um, but I think the thing to start thinking about <coughs> is how does the community want to decide how to spend 400,000 a year or whatever the number is? And, and would the community prefer me to do that? Um, I just remember from a discussion over the last year or two that there's a lot of unfunded items. Um, and there clearly needs to be a discussion somehow by someone to prioritize all those items. Um, and on the bottom of the next page, I just I'll just read off a couple of possibilities for this four hundred thousand. Um, it doesn't have to be spent on capital. FinCom in the past has waived their five percent policy, and uh, one of two things: you could use it to uh, balance the operating budgets next year. Uh, or you could cut down on the use of free cash, and I'll come back to that when we talk about the budgets next year. <clears throat> um, we could certainly, I could certainly look in the capital plan and find things to move up. Um, there's any number of things that could be moved up, but not every item should be moved up. Um, and I think my example was, you know, we have scheduled fire engine replacements, and you don't want to do it sooner. Unless, unless something breaks down, because then down the road you've caused a replacement to happen sooner than you need to. But certainly we could find capital to do it sooner. Um, I'll go over a list. There's certainly some unfunded items in the capital plan that could, could sneak in. Um, there's also large items in the capital plan that might need some design money. Um, and I, I missed your last meeting, um, but I know there was a discussion of some sort of, I'll call it, stabilization fund. So certainly, we don't have to decide to spend the 400 million. It doesn't have to be solved until, say, January. It doesn't have to be solved. You don't have to spend it on something you identify. Um, uh, you could just not spend it at all and use less free cash. Or you could put it somewhere for future use. Um, I guess my only closing thoughts were I would prefer to spend money when it's on something we can save money. So you'll see some things in the capital plan are further out. I don't know how much you want to go into it, but we're pro proposing a second round of performance contracting, some energy improvements that are clearly a money saver. Um, but that takes a certain amount of time to line up and it'll be scheduled for two or three years from now. 
one year before we'll ask for some kind of design money, if you will, and then the second year we'll ask to actually have a debt authorization, most likely. And I've sketched out an amount of you know, three or three and a half million. Yeah, why would we hear about those kind of projects? You could hear any time. I'd say that um, Joe could right now rattle off two and a half million of that. Um, I don't remember if it's in the write-up, but it certainly would be in the budget write-up. And then the other million or so is, we, that's where we might need a consultant's help to actually price things out the way we did it before. Um, you know, what, what do we have? What's the <coughs> new cost of some of the technology that replaces it? And what's the projected break-even for how many years does it pay us back? Right, and that last time we ordered, we hired some rest for that, right? Yeah, we, we, we bid it out, project. though, right? Yeah, we did an RFQ, but it wasn't a sort of a traditional competitive bid. It was we picked who we thought would do the best job. Yeah, it's different. How crazy! Yeah. Well, yeah, it's not often we can do that. <laughs> yeah, it's different. It's different than a normal Chapter One Forty Nine project. And my recollection is, <clears throat> um, most towns financed the cost through an outside party release uh, situation. Our cost of capital is far less than the lease, so we just borrowed. And most towns don't do that because they have to ask permission of town meeting. We said that that's kind of a waste of money. Let's just ask town meeting. Um, so as a result, we were able to do more and che more cheaply. And I think we borrowed for 12 years, so our break-even as a package was 12-year stuff. So was, there were some things at the time that were like an 80-year break-even. And um, I know some of those are down significantly from 80 years to much lower. So. You know, it's something that the town should look at every 10 years or so, and that's about when we're due. So it's something we had discussed 10 years ago, or if you, maybe it's a seven or eight years ago. You know, it's just time to do it again. And as we get closer, I'm just putting a placeholder in. We might want to do more, we might want to do less. We just can't know until we do that work. But again, right now, there's about two and a half million of HVAC uh, replacements that we probably do want to do, that we're in the capital plan anyway somewhere. Well, um, yeah. and whoever can speak to this. So, um, you know, 10 years later, I would expect a, a performance contracting um, proposal to include uh, sustainable and alternative energy approaches. Because I did notice in the capital that you're going to have to do a lot of HVAC at a lot of schools. And um, with the select board's directive that we need to look into more sustainable energy usage in Reading and getting the experts to come in and help you if you expect that there'd be a lot bigger component than maybe there was 10 years ago. Because 10 years ago, it seems like you build a new school, you just go to gas to try to save money, mm -hmm. and now it's different. Now we have different pressing issues. Yeah. Bob, is there another option here, which is that the select board sets the levy at something less than plus 2.5%? Certainly. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's even more options other than that, but yeah. Yeah, you could just give it to me. I mean, that's not. Bad, right? <laughs> you know. uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if now's the time to go over those funded projects, but I'll, I'll at least read them just so everyone hears them. <coughs> Use my eye. My There's a ten million dollars of athletic and recreation improvements. Um, without reading numbers, the high school stadium, a uh, turf, track, and a ropes course nearby, the high school field house floor and bleachers, uh, the birch meadow field lighting, and the birch meadow complex plans, which is what I mentioned earlier that the rec committee would like to firm up the price. What I've heard indicated back to me is they're probably going to be less than a million dollars on that item, but that still is the placeholder. Uh, and then um, I took Parker and Coolidge turf out of the capital plan and put it in this area. They were in years like seven and 10 or whatever. They were never really close. Um, you know, Coolidge doesn't have turf, so it would be a new one. And that was like in year 10 and has been for a while. And Parker turf would be a replacement, much like turf two at the stadium. But the condition of Parker turf is far better than those two, so it's not been imminent. The elementary school uh, space project, we don't know what the option is yet, the best option. The schools will certainly be discussing that. Uh, community slash senior center, again, to be discussed. 
and DPW building project, which is probably the furthest away of all of, all of those things. Um, those three larger projects are going to either take very creative financing to do inside the levy or to require an exclusion. But in order to better price them, you could use money to you know, get design work. So for instance, if we were going to build a new school, uh, design money probably goes into seven figures, I'd have to say. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not small. And you could ask for an exclusion for that, or you could figure out a different way to do it. So those are just the known <laughs> capital requests that are important enough to be identified. Um, could there be others? Probably. You know, we just bought some land over by the skating rink. Um, there's not yet been any motion by the board to spend any money to figure something out, but that could be another possibility. Um, by the same token, they also have a group looking at Oakland Road, and there's been no motion made towards this is what we'd like to consider, and that could cost some money. So it's, it's a good opportunity that, honestly, we didn't have before the override. Things were just you know, too difficult, too tight. But now it's a time to really think about there's a lot of big projects. There's some littler ones that add up to a pretty big number. What's the priority of the community? And I don't know how you figure that out, because everyone's going to have different, different views. But it seems like by starting by you know, in the capital plan itself, there's about 400000 a year. Um, but I think the total is certainly well north of $10 million that right now looks to be available over 10 years. Uh, so, you know, how does the community want to approach this? What are the priorities, and, and how do we decide? And again, I don't, I'm not saying a decision has to be made by the October financial forum or during the budget process. But it needs to start. The discussion needs to start. It's, it's kind of started. But if those of you that were around think back to the override discussion in the library building project, that was well discussed internally, but not so much externally. And some people were quite surprised to find that an override was following a library project that they didn't know. So I think it's incumbent on all of us to make sure the community understands these, these things are out there that are not easily funded. Either there needs to be more tax money to pay for them or something very creative done. And the high school comes off 24, 24, I think? 24? Yeah, I think it's uh, one's 24 and one's 23, the library and the high school. It so it's very soon. Here, it's no, it's so pretty soon. Now. It's within five years, certainly. And that had been some planning thought of that would be an opportunity to retake that money from someone's wallet. Uh, you know, it's just an obvious sort of puzzle piece fitting in, if you will. You know, your tax bill is going to come down a couple hundred dollars instead. Now we have this, whatever. We'll see. Um, and obviously, as in all times, I'm very open to ideas uh, like lower tax, you know, lower taxation, whatever the other ideas are. They're all very <coughs> um, And again, if if the community can't come to a conclusion, um, I have to submit a balanced capital, a balanced budget. I will obey the 5% rule that you have if you don't tell me differently. Um, and I probably, if no one says otherwise, have to actually put capital and debt in there, not some kind of a placeholder, because that's not genuine. You know, if you have a plan that you says do this, then I'll have to figure it out, which I will. Uh, but I'm more than willing to listen. I don't know if there's any other questions or debt capital. Um, I'm happy to answer them. And I, I think the FinCom needs to start thinking about how does this discussion play into the financial form. Mm -hmm. Greg, it's almost a process question at this point. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I, personally, I feel like when we, when we leave it too open, we don't really get anywhere. I think yeah. the community expects some recommendations yeah. Any, any other questions? Um, let me take a quick look at um, the operating budgets and the sort of financial forecast for FY21. <clears throat> Again, this, this is probably more likely to change than a capital plan will. 
the only unknown in revenues that's significant is new growth. Um, Sharon and I got a obvious error from our assessor that had a below at first estimate, so I'm sure he'll fix that. But it was a little bit discouraging. Look around town, you think there's new growth coming out of the weeds. Um, so that, that will play in what revenues are available, but uh, assuming 650000 which was our assumption collectively last year, um, next year's revenue forecast looks like it's up 3.4%. Um, I am suggesting, and we'll shortly get to, a, a increase in the use of free cash from a million to a million and a quarter, um, just as a ballpark number. And if uh, that's what happens, then it's a 3.6% increase um, in revenues plus free cash. Uh, by historic standards, 3.6% uh, is actually pretty average. Uh, clearly for the override it was a bigger number. Some years were very tight, very tough, uh, but 3.5% is pretty traditional. Um, you know, we, I think we usually say 3 to 3.5, just to be conservative. Um, again, what page are you on there? There's a memo that says FY21 budget overview, and I'm not going to, you know, you can read the details, I'm just going to hit the high spots. I'm sorry, I the page number this. There we go. Okay. 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 You can there you are. Thanks. <laughs> You've jumped one or two more pages, Paula, to accommodated costs. Um, again, those change almost daily, but I think we've got it nailed down reasonably well. Um, the bottom line on accommodated cost is up 2.8%, which is a good start because it's less than revenues, which means the operating budgets you know, will be okay. This assumes that debt and capital is spent at the 5% rate somehow. <coughs> um, benefits are up 6%, and I'm certainly going to spend some time on that. Um, energy costs are down. I won't spend a lot of time on that, but the but performance contracting has really helped out a lot because our um, you know, square footage with the new library has gone up, but our energy use is, is very good. Our cost of energy, I should say, is very good. Um, special Ed looks like it's uh, a little better behaved than it was a year ago, but again, this is uh, pretty preliminary. Um, you know, net, it's up just about 5.5%. We have a, a projection of less vocational education, and there's some miscellaneous things at 5% that we'll get into if you want. But in the benefits, uh, the big item is retirement, is a pension. Um, and that's in two parts. Uh, the part that was tabled tonight, I also can't talk about uh, as a potential retiree, hopefully someday. Um, but that's a relatively minor portion of the 24% increase that the retirement board has asked for. Um, I think without that, it's 21%. 21, okay. yeah, it's so actually in the packet. Pack yeah. So I did build it in. Um, if that article does not pass a town meeting, this is, again, maybe $100,000 or some relatively small, comparatively small amount. But the 21% increase um, really consists of, if you will, accounting. Um, the actual retirement obligation, pension obligation, is not changed. Um, the board has a desire to do a couple things. One is to use a more conservative discount rate or assumption on earnings, and that increases your liability, and I agree with that. Um, the other is to uh, fund it quick, more quickly, and I agree with that. Um, so Sharon was kind enough to bring me into the discussion kind of secondhand. I didn't actually go to a meeting. Um, and I, I support and I agree with the 20 or 21 percent increase because this is a year we can afford it. Um, three years ago or before, we could have never afforded it. Three years from now, who knows? Because our health insurance, knock on wood, is so well behaved. Um, a 24 percent increase in pensions only brings benefit costs up to 6 percent. That's, that's pretty good. Again, this isn't an actual increase of money going out the door. It's just a different speed at which it's being paid. That's important to keep in mind. It's not a new expense or a higher expense. It's just defeasing a liability more quickly. The, um, the assumption on earnings is just pure actuarial work. Um, 
depending on what actually happens, it just means you paid faster. And then the part about trying to defease it sooner is, is also paying faster. The faster the pension um, obligation is brought down to current use only and not paying for things we didn't do for many years, the sooner this town can get to fully funding OPEP. Presumably that's always been our working assumption. Um, It'll increase the baseline. So it's not just a one-time. Uh, it's it's a one-time, but then it's it's a new baseline. You're right. Exactly. So from so then on, I think this this model has time. then a four percent increase afterwards, and they had discussed five or six, and I asked them to bring it down, and that makes the first step a little higher. Uh, but I just said that's okay because we can afford to do that bigger step now. We might not be able to in you know years two or three. Um, it, it's kind of complicated math, but. It appears to me at least that once the pension is fully funded, there will be a reduction in the combination of pension plus OPEP money needed. That the OPEP doesn't need to take, the, the decrease in the pension does not need to all go into OPEP in the first year. Um, we will be requiring less than that. Now things can change, so who, who really knows? Uh, but I mean, is it 2029? Mm -hmm. And again, that used to seem like forever, but it's not that far away. 2029 is just over $11 million, and then it drops down to about $2.8 So for the next So you have an $8 million drop in your pension obligation, and you don't need $8 million to put into OPEP. You could, and just pay that down faster, but you don't You don't need it. So that's another 10 years from now, good news kind of thing. It doesn't help us today, but. But Bob, to Paula's point, I mean, yes, we can afford it this year, but by accelerating that big bump in year one. I mean, the year two and year three sort of compounded result is going to be higher than it would be otherwise. Mm -hmm. Right, so we're signing up for another year. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yep. And once you sign up, you can't unsign up. Right. No. Oh. You can't decrease. Right. Mm -hmm. Mark's background sounded like he lost me. We need him here. Oh, yeah. yeah he couldn't make it to me. No, it, it's a. Uh, one of the things we didn't do directly, we did do indirectly, and the override was asked to defease our long-term liabilities explicitly. We did ask for money to sort of step in for pension and health insurance and this and that, and that's part of why there's, you know, this is in good shape. Um, but, you know, I, I certainly discussed uh, with, the, with the then Board of Selectmen the need for not just thinking about the operating budget, but taking care of pensions, taking care of whatever the long-term obligations are, capital. Um, and again, my opinion is I don't want to leave a problem in the future for the future. I'd really like to handle it reasonably now. And had that been done with all municipalities years ago, we wouldn't be in the pension mess we are. And honestly, we've all created an OPEP mess. It's just not quite as bad because we're at least partially funding it now. Uh, and not every municipality is. When the pension board does come in to talk to you, they'll give you some statistics about what some of our peers do, what shape their pension fund is in. I don't know if they're planning to present OPEB information, but we certainly have it. Mm -hmm. But you get a picture of where we stand relative to our peers. So, so I think our last meeting we went kind of pulled this really in depth, and I think the, like Sean was saying, the biggest conclusion comes to it is whether or not we're prepared to pay the compounded interest four percent on a smaller number is four percent monetarily, right? Um, yeah. Less compounded. So one of one of the last meeting we kind of spoke about this because of the uh, healthcare cost, right, and free cash, and that's part of the one of the driving factors of bringing up this conversation. Um, but when we started out this meeting, we were also looking at, um, due to that health care savings, uh, taking on some things moving up to FY20 versus FY21 and 22. Um, you know, what would that impact be overall on, if we did take this on, what would that impact be overall between the two of them, comparatively? Well, um, right now it looks like pensions are going up about a million dollars and health insurance is going up zero. Um, there's been years, absolutely, where health insurance went up by more than a million dollars. So that's why it kind of fits in from a timing standpoint, by everything else put aside. Um, and again, to me at least, the important difference is uh, I sort of understand money's money and it's crowding out other spending or taxing more than it would need to. But the pension contributions are not a new expense, it's actuary. 
health insurance is absolutely an expense. So we're taking actual savings and we're speeding up something, if you will, a little bit fictitious. And that will get us to that, you know, it still feels like 10 years so far away, but you know, in year nine, you're gonna be quite happy to have this discussion instead of it being year 15. You know, I, and that's hard to grasp, but I, I think it's important to at least in some way, shape, or form pay it forward. That's really what it comes down to. Did, did the board discuss many other options? I, I remember. There were several options. It was like a 16 or 17 or 18 percent increase, but nothing was really small. No. Smaller, much smaller. I mean, I feel like if we were to go with options that kept us in that four and a half to five, we pushed out to 2030 or 2031, trying to you know be more conservative with that discount rate, bring it down from the 7.65 that we have to seven and a half um, to be more conservative. It was going to push it out. Um, and so doing this actually leaves it at 2029. That end date stays the same, but it would have been pushed out a year or two if, had we not. There were several options presented, and honestly, to look at them, the return report had no interest in the 21% because they didn't think there was any way that, that it could be funded by the town. It's only because I brought the, all the funding schedules to Bob that we were able to figure out, well, with this health insurance, we might be able to fit this in and keep us at 2029 because that OPEP liability is still out there and we're not fun fully funding our annual required contributions. So we need to get there. And so this was the solution that we came up with kind of cooperatively. But I don't think the retirement board even a dream that the town could maybe fit this in. And it just happened to be luck that we had that savings to, to work with. Hard work, not luck. Well, no, I mean, just that it happened to land it's there. And, and the other part of that puzzle, at least for me, was free cash is very, very healthy. Mm -hmm. If that weren't true, that would definitely change things to me. Mm -hmm. It's kind of indirect, but. And, and it, so again, the request in free cash is somewhat of a placeholder, but you know, retirement's going up a million. You know, would FinCom be willing to pay two hundred fifty thousand of that with free cash? And I don't think uh, I think it shows we go back to a million in the next year. It all comes down to honestly, free cash flows through the operating budgets because your fixed costs have to be paid if this you know change in retirement is acceptable. From what I looked at with Sharon, it's really difficult to get like a 10% increase in retirement instead of 21. It doesn't do anything. 16, 17 started to actually do something, um, just the way it worked. Um, I, you know, I have no idea what health insurance will do over the next 10 years or five years. Uh, I'm optimistic it won't be as difficult as the last five or 10 years for the country. And, you know, if we can even do what we've done over the last few years, our costs are great. It's like 4% or 3-something. You know, that'd be fine. And again, just to sort of put in the background, there is new growth coming. There is more revenue, tax revenue coming of some amount. So again, the financial background intermediate term of the town should be pretty good. Um, you know, that's not to say how we spend money. That's just kind of the general free cash and um, revenue side. And you know, if if you commit to spending things like pension funds, you absolutely are saying that's less money that could be available for operating budgets. There's no question. And that's a philosophical question. So when would we hear from the Tyrant Board about other communities and? Um it looks like the October financial forum now, okay. since this couldn't be done tonight. Um, I'm quite sure that they can send you things in advance of that, well in advance of that, so you have a picture. I just got a snapshot of it. Yeah, I think did, I sent did it? Them. Okay. I think Jackie sent them this morning, a package. That, that yeah, first so page needs to be on the work. That, that is, in fact, some oh, right. yeah. yeah, but it, it's not something I can actually discuss until I get my disclosure. Okay. Yeah, this is just COLA stuff, though. I guess there is some information. Oh, you mean there. in terms of COLA? Um, well, like on the page 10 of the second handout, the one that came in with the email today from the retirement board. Um, I'll be careful not to talk about COLA. I, they had two packets. This is one of the two packets. Okay. If you look under the column, it looks like this. If you look under the column, it says percent funded. There's a couple towns listed. So at least you get a flavor. It's not a lot of communities. 
Actually, um, I thought that there was four, there's four pages to this, and they actually show you each. Sure, page. It shows you each town, and mm -hmm. we did hit on this a little bit last meeting mm -hmm. as well. As, um, assume that liability much sooner than a lot of our contemporary towns out there. So. We're getting rid of the pension obligation responsibility faster. Okay. It's a coal-based definitely adds to it. You know, it's a number yeah, of that. Yeah, we're not talking about that. Yeah. But that's what those were supposed to be about. That was more related to the article that we can't discuss. Yeah. Um, what is the actual, if there is such a thing, requirement for when you have to fund? Because I know that changed. In terms of it used to be 2029 or 2028 years ago. It's 2040. Well, well, we also are aware of the liability that's in the to be funded. So. Yeah, and we're also using still a not very conservative mm -hmm. discount rate or investment return assumption. Seven and a half is still a little high. Right. But if you move that to seven and a quarter, it croaks what you have mm -hmm. to pay. And mm -hmm. since it's all funny money, I said, all right, we don't have to do that. But I think we're above average at the seven and a half um, slightly. So. Actually, when you look at a lot of the communities, I think a lot of them are at the seven and a half. There's not yeah. many that There's are. There's probably lower. not a lot much yeah. higher and then this one. Not a lot near eight for sure. Everybody's yeah. in that seven and a half. Maybe 7.25 is a baseline. But. Yeah. So I'm sure the retirement board. I don't have more to say, but, but it is a, an important point that I'm the problem that caused this. I'm the one that said the town could afford this. Uh, they did not ask for it. They did not assume that they would have asked for less. And it's a philosophical discussion. We tend to kind of share the funding schedules with Bob's. He's kind of fill in the what can we afford sort of. We don't want to kind of try to pull something on the town that really can't be afforded. Really have to know, just sign up for the out years, Mike. Well, well, actually, on that, it's interesting. Um, this will take some digesting, but to me, it's easier to step up now and then pay 4% a year than to not step up and pay 6% a year. And I know that sounds funny, but every year is really self-contained. You have a fixed amount of revenue, you have accommodating costs, and so forth. It's not about the actual dollars. It's about the change year over year. And a six is much harder to digest than a four. I agree. So yeah. Yeah. It, it's funny because it's counterintuitive, but that's just kind of my experience, is to find money each year for the six instead of the four is harder. Mm -hmm. If you build that base now. And you're assuming six if we were forced into it. That's what their numbers were. Were they five something? They five were not. Later? They, they kept creeping up. I mean, I think same. Last, last year, I think they did like a no, five. Not even. Like like or something like, and they were creeping up on this funding schedule. They were definitely going to be up near the six, or we were going to be pushing out many years. So it definitely is one of those you're just trying to balance. Like, how do we stay where we're supposed to, where we're hoping to be that 2029 and get this paid off sooner rather than later? Because you're just keeping the pan further down the road. And this and the I'm sure I asked for less than four. I think the answer was like a 30% increase instead of 21. Mm -hmm. like, okay, really hard, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think one of the things to note here is that the, the return rate is 7.5%. So mm -hmm. it's great, right? Um, relatively. That also typically means there's some type of risk involved with that in order to get that return. So we have to, right. we're also making the assumption we're going to get that return rate based upon the past five, the past ten yeah. years. Right? And we talked about the average uh, right. return for bread, so they are up in that range. So it has, a, you know, like their five year was under that, but their you know, long term return has been up in that. So, right. so we are getting it long term. It's just, it's just hard to know. It gets an up and down. I mean, I think the year before we had a return of 18%, and last year we lost 1.36%. It's, it's all over the place, you know, but on average, the return is there about 10 or 10 percent. Yeah, but the difference to me, going back 20, 25 years, not to go too far back before you were born. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I used to have to do this work for corporations trying to figure out how to, you know, fund their long-term liabilities um, as a fixed income guy. 
and assumptions at the time were eight and a half, nine, something like that. But interest rates were like seven, eight, nine, and now interest rates are one, two, three. So the gap between interest rates and these assumptions is much larger now than it used to be. And, and the difference is the real rate. So you're betting on much better stock returns, if you will, much more than it used to be the case. And to me, that's dangerous. That's why I asked to bring the seven and a half down even lower. It just couldn't possibly be sustained because, again, it's actuarial work. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Put the like work for Thank you. Any questions? Sure. Mark, I know that um, at the audit committee meeting, one of the discussions was getting the paperwork so that the investment opportunities opened up for other than just essentially for OPEP? bank accounts for OPEP. Yeah. yeah. That's is that done or done. is that not done? It, it has to be for the select board so we finally have the trust document. We need to, you yeah, so the next time you see me, that would be something you would need to address. <laughs> so, right. Right. And we're working on getting that same approval from RMLD. So RMLD needs to actually reaccept the section of the law that we already reaccepted. Um, and that's been a little bit of a back and forth. They didn't quite understand why Why do we need to do this. Because you know, the section of the law has changed since they accepted it, and they need to know that you accept all the responsibilities that are now in there. Um, and so they finally have kind of come back to me and said, we get what we need to do, and we'll do it at the next meeting. But there was like some some lack there. So our MLD will probably follow a little bit after ours, because that could be the legal bill for them. Right? We're waiting for them to re-accept the section of the law that we've already done. Um, and so now we have our trust document, which just needs select board approval and then move forward. And they only meet a couple times a year, that, that board that we have to apply to, um, to actually invest our funds there. So there might still even be a lack like twice a year or so that they're actually accepting their applications and then accepting new members and our new system into the system. So, so the problem was that the, the uh, expected rate of return was higher than probably mm -hmm. I think is reasonable, but also our ability to invest was quite limited. Mm -hmm. This is for OPEP. Right? For OPEP. He's right. talking about OPEP, right. yeah. And if it if it hasn't been clear, it's it's important to remember that there's two kinds of expenses that the town incurs that can't go down by law. One's pension and one's snow and ice. So they're both kind of fictitious numbers, if you will. Uh, but if you go from 500 to 700 in snow and ice, and then you say, well, we'll go back down next year, you can't. It's not legal. Um, same with pension. If you do you know, believe me and say, well, let's just jump it up to this number, and, and I'm wrong, which I have, have been, uh, you can't go back down. It, it is a permanent commitment. Um, and and that, I thought about that, and that is clearly a risk. But again, this is an obligation the town has to pay. That's the way I look at it. Something to mention, too, is that, you know, with the, um, the valuation that we recently had done, we, we went from 73.8% funded to 76.8%. So we are making headway. We're not going the other way. We are making headway to our goal of being fully funded. We're not going, losing value and going the other direction. So that's important to know. I'm kind of dismayed that MWRA is 95% funded. <laughs> I'm sorry. Really? I'm kind of dismayed to see that MWRA is 95% funded. <laughs> <laughs> Well, some organizations put that as a high priority, and then they charge for it. Exactly. <laughs> and our life department and our three enterprise funds, I don't know what the percent is, but it's better for yes. OPEP. Yes. So they're not lagging as we are in the general fund. No, yes. but I mean, there's a lot of communities that are certainly doing worse than we are. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this stuff I said, thank you. Yeah. I, I said, thinking I could present all the coal or where everybody is, but mm -hmm. also gave you funding percentages for yeah. those communities yeah. as well, which is nice to have. Definitely. You can't talk about the case that I was intending, so. <laughs> yeah, and I have to say, from 10 or 15 years ago, I thought the town would be higher than 80 by now. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't worked out that way. Uh, and we're no worse than others, it's just mm -hmm. been slower. I think, didn't we have like, in 2008, like, a lot of systems took a yeah. really big hit. So. Yeah. And, and interest rates blocked. <coughs> so that, that's a summary of kind of where we are. And I, you know, My final question on, oh, yeah. on the computer. So then do we put in the 4% a year increase, or do we sort of back into what that number is based on 
being fully funded. We put in the four percent. We do. Yeah. Consistently. Until they do another revaluation and then they may come up with slightly. Every other numbers. year we do. So every two years a new valuation comes up. And if we do improvements, like try to reduce the discount rate, that something else could. But I mean, we're, we're at least getting where most people are, or most communities are, and that's 7.5%, 7.25. Probably is the lowest I see most communities at, although I think I saw Lemonster was at 5.5. Yeah. That's very uncommon. Most of them yeah. are in that 7s, somewhere in the 7s. Um, so every two years, it's revisited, and then we will pick a funding schedule based on what we find. Obviously, we're trying to fit it into what works for the town. Anybody wants to put something out there that we can. Um, if there's, um, you know, if there's any questions, obviously you can ask them now. But you can also ask them any time between now and the financial forum. Um, I'll send out an update to FinCom sometime, certainly before October, but I'd almost like to do it midway between, just because I do expect some things to change. Um, once we get new growth much more tangibly, that's a number I'll definitely up update all this for and let you know. Um, I don't know if we'll have free cash certified by the October Financial Forum. Uh, I'd say maybe, but probably less than half, half and half on that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Eric, now you can discuss the financial form and kind of how much you want to allocate to different things. Yeah. This would have normally been an October discussion. Yeah. And we don't have another meeting. I was just starting to oh, check between now and the financial form. in November. Do but not no, before the financial form. Yeah. And the November one, I can't remember if it's before a town meeting or in the middle of the No, meeting. it's before. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, town meeting starts on the 12th. Yeah, it is before. Yeah. Yeah. But whatever so you do then can't get into print for town meeting, but you can certainly do things in advance of town meeting. You know, if you're going to vote on articles and you want that to be in print, it has to be on vote. That would have to be at the financial yeah. forum, right? right? All right, no, the, the, this preview um, is helpful. I appreciate the work that, that went into it uh, for, for, for bringing it tonight. Any other questions at this point from the committee on this? From anybody else, comments? And apologize for coming in late. I was next door at the Conservation Commission. Okay. We'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot. <laughs> still, still learning. Um, I think I came in with the budget transfers. Did we take care of all the business we needed to there? I've just given you just an overview for now. An overview? Yeah. All right, so I'm the big picture person. In October, you'll actually be asked about We'll take care of it then. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so next on the agenda was to begin to discuss the financial forum, but given given some of the conversation we just had around you know, possibilities here, potentially for the particular way of the capital plan, I wonder if it makes sense to um, go to the fiscal sustainability discussion a little bit first and then circle back around and talk about the financial forum and how we're going to approach that on the agenda. <coughs> um, so what I'm going to ask do is what I'm going to ask is for for Sean to kind of describe um, a, a bit of a reiteration from what we did last time. Um, some of the ideas uh, that that came up. We have a, a larger group here um, that certainly would like to kind of hear what we laid out. This is certainly meant to be a conversation starter. Um, and interested in, in engaging with the, the the different boards and committees, um, particularly those represented here tonight. So, Sean. Yeah. Um, so a little bit of the backdrop for this um, concept or idea. Um, there were two issues that we've discussed on and off um, in FinCom over the last year plus, I would say, that um, were kind of swirling in my head and, and I kind of pulled them together. And so um, the first issue is um, if you look at our reserves position, um, it's about double what our policy calls for today. You know, we're, we're going to be somewhere north of 14 million, I think, at the end of the year. Um, and uh, our policy calls for 7%. That's going to put us right around 14%. Um, so, uh, and, and I'll hear from folks sometimes that they think we have too much free cash, that we're kind of hoarding money, um, that we have unspent override money in there, which is a fair, you know, a fair thing to say. Um, the nature of the override is that you have to sort of, you know, for it to be sustainable for more than a year, you essentially raise more than you need in the first year. Um, and you have the fact that we just have a kind of, you know, some of the hiring took time, right? So, so there is truly, you know, what you might deem over unspent override money in uh, in our reserves. Um, 
the other uh, so, so I started thinking about what are what are some mechanisms you could use if you believe the free cash was too high by some amount. You know, it's, it doesn't matter what the amount is. But if you believe that it was too high, what are some mechanisms you could do to sort of right size it? So um, mechanisms would include us spending using even more free cash in a future budget and reducing the tax levy. That's one option. Um, measures could include, you know, I, one thing I, I suggested, la I shouldn't say I suggested it, one thing I referred to last time would be something like a, a tax you know, rebate, essentially. Um, I think that one has all kinds of logistical challenges attached to it, but we could literally send payments back to tax, pay you know, to taxpayers. Yeah, Sharon's freaking out. Um, <laughs> she made the same face now yeah. she did last yeah. time. Um, <laughs> the, the first problem that I run into with that one is, what, what if a property transferred ownership year over year? What do you, what do you do in that situation? So, uh, so sure, sure, you come up with more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't even know if it's legal for that matter, but you know, uh, leaving that aside. So, um, but then I started thinking about you know what's really the best way to sort of make good use of unspent override funds, and um, I think at the end of the day, it's trying to do something that helps us delay the next override as far as as long as possible. Um, so, with that in mind, I, I then started thinking about a discussion that we had during our budget discussions uh, last fall. Um, um, and Dr. Doherty, you'll remember, maybe you'll remember, um, but I asked the question, you know, what things aren't making it into the budget because they don't sort of hit that short-term need, you know, that, that, that we have to balance the budget, we've got, you know, short-term pressures, um, but that if we were in kind of an investment mode, you might say there's a medium to long-term payoff for making this investment. And uh, we talked about it a bit, you know, you mentioned things like uh, full-day kindergarten, which is probably outside of the scope of what we're talking about here from a, from a size perspective. You talked about additional Counseling FTEs, I think, was another one that came to mind. Um, you know, kind of on the spot there. Um, we talked about it last time in FinCom, and and uh, Sharon, I think you suggested maybe a grant writer would be something that might fit into that, right? Um, and so, so what I started thinking about was, um, could we create a mechanism and you know call it a fiscal sustainability fund or an economic sustainability fund, whatever you want to call it, um, which was explicitly set aside to fund um, investment projects, and they would. Uh, uh, they, they would not necessarily be capital expenses, probably more likely be operating expenses. Um, we'd have to sort of define policies around, you know, FinCom, if they approve, if, if it comes out of FinCom, for instance, if we approve uh, an expenditure against one of these investments, we're making, say, a three-year commitment to it so that, you know, we're not trying to hire a position that we only can guarantee for a year or what have you. Um, we'd have to think about things like, you know, uh, what's the process for sort of refunding this fund after you've expended it, you know, over say five years or something along those lines. We'd have to think about things like, um, what would be your criteria for, for sort of assessing whether or not the things we're investing in are paying off, right? You know, how do we how do we measure whether we're getting the bang for our buck? I think the grant writer is probably a relatively easy one. Um, you know, counseling support might be a little bit tougher. You'd have to think about, it's probably a little bit less of a straight line to a dollar spent here and a dollar saved here. Um, but um, but that doesn't mean we couldn't think creatively about sort of proxies that you use to measure the effectiveness of that investment. So um, so that was the notion. Uh, you know, I think it ties together a lot of what we've been, what we've been talking about here. And Bob, you, you suggested, you know, there were two thoughts that you had, and one was spend money to save money. I think this fits into that bucket. Um, and and the, the other the other piece of this idea that sort of excited me was, um, you know, I think I think I think to my experience in in the corporate world and you know our company, uh, my company views itself as one that's you know super innovative. And one of the things we kind of constantly have to remind our associates is that innovation sometimes come comes in the form of finding really interesting, unique, clever ways to save money. Um, as opposed to sort of building something new, right? Um, everybody thinks about building something new when you say the word innovation. Um, and so, part of me, part of me gets excited about the notion of turning this into like a challenge for the, you know, for the, all the employees of the town to sort of identify opportunities that could be, um, you know, funded out of a, out of a pool like this and make it a little bit competitive and instill sort of a culture and thinking about how to save money for the town and how to create new, you know, new opportunities for the town to um, find economic sustainability. So I'm going to pause there. Yeah. 
Thank you, Sean. It's it's a lot to take on board. Um, we, we we chatted about it a, a bit last time. Would would ask the committee if they've had any other thoughts since then. You know, me at a, at a high level. That, that look, there's a there's a lot of potential detail here and how how exactly this, this would this work? Uh, do we even in fact believe free cash is too high? Is your starting starting question right? Um, whatever that means. Um, but at a high level, right? The the idea is very interesting to me and very intriguing. That this we. we we could be in a, a, a pretty good position here to be able to spend money and save money, um, and that's you know ultimately I think uh, you know, uh, we uh, we owe that consideration to the town uh, if that opportunity exists. So uh, before I open it up, just any any other further thoughts from the committee on this? I think grant writing is probably one of the best, uh, one better ideas within that realm because typically a grant writer. Um, earns their own pay, more or less, um, so that enables other projects because their ability to write those grants and get those grants for, uh, could be things like uh, capital improvements, or could be things for uh, the schools committee, or whatever it may be for um, HVAC, MEP, uh, conceptual drawings, or CD drawings, 90, 100%. Um, there's a thousand things out there um, that if someone knows where to look, can find them, uh, whether they're private, state, or federal, uh, that's all. That's all up to the, the grant writer, and uh, I think that's a, a great way to start with uh, kind of doubling down on your investment from from a sustainability aspect. You're spending money to hopefully save money at, at the end. But I think Eric also did say, how do how do you approach that on the sense of um, is that an internal FinCom select board? Um, and I think that's kind of what, what we're talking about now, right? How do we how would we structure this, even if there's a conceptual idea? How would that even be structured to figure out um, the sustainability fund? Yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah. to me, I think the first step is, do we have sort of broad agreement yeah. that it's a good policy? Um, number one, and maybe number two, you know, size or scope of such a thing might be a good place to start. I think, you know, I mean, I'm reasonably confident there are mechanisms to get it done. You could potentially put it in FinCom reserves. It could be something, you know, it could, no? Absolutely not. Why? That's for emergencies and unforeseen expenses. Ah, uh, that's right, yeah, okay. Nonetheless, you, you and Ray are creative and smart people. You will not be a authority on this That's, that's right, yeah, that's, that's right. Town yeah, right. that's right. Um, yeah, we, we talked about that last time, okay. that's, that's fine. Um, but nonetheless, I'm, I'm confident we could figure out a way to get it done. There's a mechanism to get it done. I think the first question is, do you know, do folks agree that it's, from a policy perspective, something that we should do? I think the, the challenge versus like a you know, private industry and everything else is profit is the goal in private industry, whereas in the public sector, you're evaluating student outcomes and sure. services to the, the town. So it just it's hard to be able to evaluate the payback sometimes because your payback might be like better student outcomes and mm -hmm. so it's it's definitely more challenging to evaluate well and I, part of me thinks that's why it, it is unique from our sort of traditional budgeting process right because that's yeah. that's the day job of the folks that are writing the budgets for the traditional budgeting process um, you know, but when I think about the role that that we're supposed to play, we should be thinking about medium to long term sustainability, um, and sort of encouraging town meeting to think the same way. Um, in addition to sort of tackling the near term needs that are, are reflected in our budgets as it is. And is this um, so? Town meeting needs to spend this money. So is this an option where we can come up? come up with a concept, um, we can come up with some options, and then they can vote at a town meeting. If, well, I guess you get their buy-in that this is something they'd like to do, and then, um, because I'm hearing um, wide-ranging suggestions, and, and I like the grant idea myself as well, but there's all over the place, so between school and town, so how do we prioritize that, or who makes that decision? Right, you want those ideas to come from staff, exactly. not us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All rats. <laughs> oh, no, Paula, if you have a good idea, come on. <laughs> um, any other comments, questions? 
would welcome any any initial reactions from you know I look at Bob Sharon uh, Dr. Doherty and Gail but anybody else here as well uh, Bob. Um, I, I love the idea I agree with John's uh, kind of first approach which is spend money to save money but don't lose sight of the fact that spend money to generate revenue um, that's really what a grant writer is doing, for instance. It's a little sneaky. Sure. Uh, but also, you know, if you could spend money to promote economic development in some fashion, that's yeah. the same outcome. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the mechanism might be a little tricky, but I, it's not. That's not the problem. The problem is, is this a good idea? And I think it's a great idea. I think there's a lot of details to be worked out, but naturally. Could they uh, just select something that they want? A, an idea that somebody pr presents, you know. FinCom backs the idea, it just becomes an yeah. article and they use free cash sure, for it. Absolutely. So that free cash is always getting an infusion taken out for something that meets this criteria. Um, you know, it, it could take that form, but I, I think their idea is more to sort of shove the money aside that's somewhere. What I, that's the piece not I was free trying. cash. Because yeah. anything I can think of is like a stabilization fund, and then it would require a two thirds vote, right. and that's much harder to get out, and yeah. it's much harder to get passed. So that's why I yeah. say free cash sounds like that. You know, if you sponsored, a, if, if it was a sponsored article, but you know, Pinkham right. said we support this article because this is our hope to, you know, yeah. for financial sustainability that this might be helpful. And I love culturally what it does. Right. Mm -hmm. It inspires people to think differently and look around. Yeah, and you'll find some sort of small impact ideas, and you'll find a lot more of those, and then you may find a few big ones. We had a financial forum many years ago, maybe 10. I remember putting the ideas. In which we asked the people in the room for ideas on revenue generation and cost cutting. Um, you know, and we got a lot of ideas that we did. It was really a very, and staff didn't produce, honestly, most of those suggestions. Um, and, you know, and we didn't do all of them. And, uh, you know, some of it was philosophical about, you know, electronic billboards or whatever. I knew you'd remember that one. Um, but the point was, it's great to stimulate ideas from any group of people. That's always good. There's no downside to stimulating ideas. You know, I, I can certainly ask internally. John can too, and I don't know what we'll come up with. It's not, it's not traditional. <laughs> you know, we've asked with the budget process, especially um, a few years ago, is constantly, how do we save money? How do we not spend whatever? But that's a little bit different. Um, you know, although a motivator of, we're gonna have to cut someone's job unless you find a way to save the money mm -hmm. somewhere else is powerful. But this is more creative. It's not so much necessarily the nuts and bolts. It's something that is not part of your job. But think outside that. What could the town do as a whole? It might have nothing to do with your job. Um, I have no idea what kind of ideas we'll do. And it's not just cuts, right? To save right. money. This is this is yeah, this is spending spend. money to accomplish something. You know, performance contract is just a simple one. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have to think about others grant writing. It's already on the to-do list, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, but Paul is right. Our, our main jobs are to produce a service, and sometimes it's very difficult to measure that service. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't lose sight of that, but that doesn't mean you can't do other things to help complement that. Now, in terms of setting up another fund, does it have to be a stabilization fund, or does it? I can't. I can't imagine what else we can set up. Oh. Can't set up free cash on the <laughs> you, you could ask her to hide it somewhere. I wouldn't agree. I don't well, think I, I could why, do why that. Why couldn't you just create a policy from FinCom? Frankly, some of the capital is that policy and other things like that. They're essentially guidelines. Set a, a dollar amount as part of the guideline. Use that to go forward into the budget and present that to town meeting. It's completely transparent and clear as to what it's for. But it would be for a different purpose every year, and so it would have a different line item. It would be yeah. in different spots of the budget. Right, and it assumes it passes muster. Yep. You know what I mean? For it to stay yeah. in, in the oh, budget. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, but the, you know, you could address that by having the policy sunset, for instance, and we have to renew it. Or you could address it by, yeah, um, you could address it by, you know, and to, your, and to your point that it has to go to something different every year, you know, the policy could have these uh, guidelines, if you will, around, um, 
this reflects sort of a commitment of people in the room at the time that this is something we're going to fund for a minimum of, say, three years, right? Which doesn't obligate anybody to vote for it, and obviously people turn over every year and that sort of thing, but it sort of just reflects the intent that, you know, we expect this to be something that doesn't get axed after one year before it gets a chance to, you know, to show results. Um, you, you have a mechanism more or less to do this now. It's the community priorities. So, for instance, when we asked the community to fund our CASA, and John asked for that was a history history. Okay. Yeah. You know, that was seventy and one hundred fifty thousand. That was meant to be a recurring cost. It wasn't accomplishing what you said at all. But currently, there is that. So, if it wanted to go through the normal budget process, that's easy. That would be the um, and then it can go through the normal budget process as a one-time expense or an assumed three-year permanent expense you know, to be discussed. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is as much as anything about creating that carrot to incent yeah. the good ideas, as opposed, you know, as opposed to that mechanism, which today serves, well, we've got a hole in the budget. We need to figure out how to address it. Is this important enough for us to, you know, to address it as a community priority, right? Right, and, so and it's PR, too. Yeah, yeah. you know, and as a community priority, you would be the one making the suggestion at town meeting, what are the good ones? Yeah. And that would be the easiest way for you to have a strong role in that. Um, you know, I, I suppose we'd work on a budget and come up with something and then you would decide. We would certainly present you, you know, if you said you could have $250,000 for this, we would have to come up with lists and we'd probably be able to get you a list of more than 250 and then let you decide. And then ultimately town meeting will decide. That's the simplest way to do this without getting complicated. And it's just part of the budget. Sure. So the money then has to sit somewhere within the line items of you know, one, one department or another. Mark? Um, I think it's a really interesting idea in terms of how we can think outside the box. I think it's critical that it's not just um, kind of inside employees, but the whole community. Uh, that could be providing input into what these ideas could be and, and you know, what, what they could accomplish. I think one of the, the things to think about is this kind of the size and scope. It may be that there's a smaller bucket that could be a lot of grant writing position, something like that, and then it has clear <coughs> potential payback, and maybe there's something a little bit broader in scope and a little bit more you know, out there, a little bit harder to measure the direct result. Um, but if it's set on a, on a tight time frame of a few years, it might work very, very nicely. Um, the full select board met last night. We started the discussion and the realization that we do have this great big list of things that are potential projects for the town. And we need to determine a way to gather information and figure out what the community's priorities really are and then develop plans to accomplish them. And to try to do all of them, obviously, is not possible. Um, and you know, one of the uses of the excess funds could be related to you know, a capital-oriented kind of project with the benefit of it being a one-time expense and, and done, not have to worry about anything occurring. It just got started last night, and, and I think that that's a, a big deal. I, I would hope that that you know, can somehow be part of the forum, too. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping out of the line on that one. But um, I think that has to be part and parcel of the discussion of kind of the excess funds. And how, how do we want to use them and just make sure that you know, things make sense, they fit the priorities, and, and you know, move forward what it is that we, we want the community to, to have done you know, the next few pieces, maybe the next five to ten year window. Mm -hmm. From a capital standpoint. Here. From a capital standpoint, right. Yeah, so we're going to definitely make that um, to go back to Sean's sort of kind of opening remarks, um, you know, the budget process method works simply, but it doesn't solve the problem of you. It looks like you have too much free cash. That's a different issue. Um, and Sharon can look a little harder, but I, I do think the only way is to put it in a place that's harder to get at. Uh, and that can be separate from this discussion. You've discussed it for a couple of years anyway, so never mind this purpose here, which is good, but just putting it into some more savings account that is harder to get at, um, and it's not free cash. And we have a stabilization fund. When I looked at peers a couple years ago for economic development, our free cash was good, but it was not great. I was really surprised. But our stabilization fund was horrible. 
we have a million something. Many communities had eight, 10, 12 million. I, I don't know why. Some of them have capital stabilization accounts. Something comes along they didn't expect. All of a sudden, there's a million dollars more in capital needed that year. They have a way to pay for it. Um, we have so much free cash now that we can do that, but it's sitting there to be used by anything, by a majority vote. So, you know, FinCon can certainly still have the discussion of what else do you do with free cash aside from this. This method, if it's used the way it's set up, would just allow you to use more free cash each year, more for a specific purpose, whatever the number is. I know I'm definitely, and I've said it many times in the past, I'm a big proponent, and I think we should put, if we think that 5% is sacred, I think we should put 5% in stabilization. It takes two thirds, but it should, if we really consider it yeah. sacred. If we don't feel the confidence that the town meeting would support spending that, then, then we're off on in terms of what we think is the priority. You mean the transferring the, re the minimum yeah. to a stabilization, so it's a 7%, correct? Or well, whatever. no, so I think our policy is 7%, but okay. we will actually change, you know. Yeah, five is the minimum. minimum. We will take action if it looks five like we go below. Yeah. Yeah. Five. So to me, five is sort of that sacred number that you put into that. Yeah. Personally, I'm in great support of that. So on the sustainability fund idea, I mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Bob, and I like the, I like aspects of sort of the lowest friction approach. Um, I'm also not personally opposed to thinking about the higher bar of a sustainability fund, you know, for those reasons, right? You know, if, if, um, because the, because it's not always going to be a straight line between investment and return. Um, and sometimes we're going to have to think of proxy measures and things like that. Um, there might be value in having there be a pretty high bar for making a compelling case uh, to town meeting that you know that investment is one that we should we should make and that we have you know pretty good line of sight into how we're going to prove out the you know the efficacy years down the line. Um, there could be merit to that. What's your appetite for trying something and it fails? My appetite's very high. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, we have this great concept and we do something the first year and it doesn't work out like we thought. Does that mean it was a bad concept? Or it doesn't to me either, but. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it is, I, I, you know, John and I can talk about it's going to be hard to measure almost no matter what we do. Yeah. And energy might be the easiest thing to measure, maybe, but other things are going to be hard. Which is too bad because I think one of the great opportunities is things like some, you know, special ed additional support, mm -hmm. hoping for in the future. But how do you say, well, gee, if we did nothing, this is right. what we would have expected. Yeah. To me, that's, you know, it. Yeah. it gives you some funding to invest into ten things you know that you've got that there's something Yeah, I mean I think we have to have faith that folks are smart enough to pick up here's the logic, here's the intuition that gets you to we think there's a quote unquote payoff here even if we're not gonna be able to measure dollar for dollar. Right, because you can make numbers say whatever you want in the end. You can. So you have to trust that. Which is why the high bar is important. It's got to be a compelling case. So, what would it look like? So, if we, if we, <coughs> I'm just going to throw out a nice round number. If we said we're going to establish a million dollar, we put on the warrant to establish a million dollar sustainability fund, with the intention of funding it for five years, um, and after two years we want to pull the plug. I assume there's a warrant article that would allow us to do that as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so just to piggyback off a follow-up statement, and knowing our new director of student services, Camp and Wool, one of the biggest things she did was in-source some of the autism-related special education stuff. Now, many of, much of that for us is already in-sourced, at least through the middle school, but that yielded huge savings for Huge savings. There's, a, there's an article you can Google on it 
about the process she went through to insource the autism and build an entire school that was specifically focused on that, they yielded huge savings. So there, there is a case where insourcing of special education can bring about some some savings that is real, tangible, right, that easier, monetary. Sure, yeah. We could argue we could do that with other things potentially. Dr. Dorgan and Gail would, and this town would have a much better handle on it right now than I do, but those kind of things, whether it's dyslexia in certain cases or other things that might be more tangible than you immediately think there are. But I keep looking at that um, list of unfunded capital projects. I'm just going to go out there a little bit. Okay, those are all like community, preserva community preservation act type things that get funded. Can we back into funding a community preservation fund with our free cash? <laughs> I don't think so. I told you it was going to be out there. You can use free cash for any reason. Well, you know, the, you have, the mechanism you have to first have uh, the CPA fund. The mechanism is well, a levy. If she's saying that we just use our money since we don't have CPA money, the answer is Oh, I thought she was saying use it to start when we actually, the first step is getting that approved, right? Yeah, I mean, it's different if you actually want real CPA money, but yeah, you could do it. Well, that's it. Could you say, like, yeah. well, I don't even know if it's legal. Could you say, like, okay, well, look at all these playgrounds we need to fund and look at all the money the state is continuing to put into that act. Can we... Everyone's going to have a levy, and guess what? We've already raised it through the override. We're just going to yeah. have a line item on our bill or whatever, and we fund it. And it's, it's out there, but then we get all the matching funds from the state, and that'd be lovely. Yeah, and that's um, instead of sort of you know investing to save or investing for more cash, investing to provide more services. Not for all. <coughs> Just to follow on that point, we, um, Bob and I have talked very, very, very briefly about this, but there probably should be a discussion of CPA in general. Okay. Um, it was just, it just received additional funding yeah. because they raised the fees on deeds, I believe, is what it yeah. was. <laughs> um, but it's got new funding coming in, and I know Jason Lewis has talked to me about it many, many times. He said, There's a lot of greens in there, there, people doing it, and yeah, it has a history now, whereas before we didn't know. Yeah, so it's probably worth having that discussion at least. It's separate from, from your point of just yeah. creating our own version. That'd be great. Did they ask for one at one point, one time? Uh, the 15 years ago. Yeah. And it lost by a narrow margin and died forever. And, and it was Which brand was new. And it was actually a really yeah. tough time. When we asked, the time was horrible. Yeah. It was so hard to close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the funding was good at the time, and it yeah. did slide a little, but it has bounced. Yeah, a lot of our peers, mm -hmm. less than half probably, but a lot of them do use it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you put that list of unfunded projects up there, you're going to find a lot of support in the taxpayers, like a lot of people raising their hands saying, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Pardon me if this is what you asked, Sean, but the, the mechanics of actually creating the, the stabilization fund, does that the town meeting have to approve the creation of that fund? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. We can do it next day. Mm -hmm. And then fund it, you know, right afterwards in a later article mm -hmm. if it wanted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or you could use the current stabilization fund if you didn't care that it wasn't mm -hmm. you know, distinct. Right. Say you can yeah. say they can serve the same purpose. Yeah. Right. So we have five or six months to settle the sort of mechanics question and get some, or, well, what is it, seven Tuesdays uh, uh, before the warrant? February. Yeah, so warrant. five yes. months. Yeah. Take. Um, but can, can I propose that you guys, in the, in the budget process, sort of start thinking about, you know, what would that list look like? And again, it's just kind of a round number that I threw out just for discussion, but if we said it was $200,000 a year, you know, what are some things that might fit under that list? How would you prioritize some of those things? Um, you know, maybe we, can, maybe we can include as part of those budget discussions, what's the, you know, what's the case? What's the intuition that gets you to sort of convince, you know, convince and compel people that this would have a, a sort of a payback to it? Is that doable? Yeah. Since you said it was okay to fail. Yeah. I haven't heard from the school department. Do you guys 
think um, grant writing would yield some results. Is there still enough out there that, so from the, the school department the, perspective? The, the tricky part about grants um, is that you you have to be able to, some, a lot of times you have to qualify. Um, and there was certain criteria when you qualify, the type of community you have, you know, for example, communities that have high poverty mm -hmm. tend to have more opportunities for grants. Sure. Um, a lot of the, the public grants are either entitlement grants, which you get a certain amount, you don't, you know, you do the paperwork, but a lot of the publicly funded grants, um, they aren't as available anymore. Okay. Um, so then you look at private foundations, you look at private grants. Yeah. If you are funding positions, then at some point the grant dries up. And then what do you do? And that's that's something we've had mm -hmm. to face in the past. Mm -hmm. um, if it's important enough, you have to put it in the budget. You have to mm -hmm. figure out a way to fund it and does something else get taken out of the budget. So there are pros and cons to it. I mean, certainly um, if you want to fund things that are not position driven, yes, grant writers would be a definite. Okay, there's still opportunities. Yes. Even for us. Yeah, they, there are opportunities. A lot of times they're small, they're not, they're not large, they're small. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So just to hit on that, also a little bit on the building aspect, because probably what you do for a living. Um, sometimes with grant writing, you have to spend money to get money to. So uh, it could be things like a science center for the school. Sometimes it, it, that, that means, okay, you put a million dollars down and then they give you 750000 right? $1,750,000 to run this project. And then usually you use that to partially fund the position. The, the, there's certain uh, parameters involved with that, but right in line with that is the energy projects, and that, that's why I bring part of this out. So you're talking about O2 sensors and the HVC and MEP upgrades. All of, a lot of these projects that um, universally run through all the town facilities eventually will need to be upgraded. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them qualify for grants to some extent. If you use X, you get you, you get A, and um, that. And I think uh, Dr. Tor is absolutely right. The funding a single position is going to be much more difficult because then you have to reapply, mm -hmm. and then there's only so many candidates. So if there's ten candidate, ten, ten candidate candidates, and you're number eleven, you don't get it. And now you have to come up with the fund itself, and that actually happens a lot. Like uh, different things, like uh, community developments for um, public work. I, um, public forest or uh, playgrounds like you're talking about or uh, public spaces developing um, uh, sidewalks for accessible space in a town. Um, th these are all things that community development and economic development um, that you can get grants for. It's just uh, usually they do involve spending some type of monetary value for capital planning. And then you get, you, um, yeah. not, not so much matching, but they'll, they meet, they'll say, okay, if you spend X value, we're gonna do X percentage, we'll pay off X percentage. So if it's a $10 million project, you might have, you might have to spend three million. But yeah, I mean, that's how we do things around here. Right. So, <laughs> so, library. so that, that's kind of what I meant by usually the grant writer. Um, from my experience in the past, we have used grant writers and essentially their salary ends up getting covered or consumed by said grant because you're allowed to do that within the grant. You're allowed to pay their, their salary. I guess the I grant. was thinking of more along the lines of uh, the private um, foundations, of right. which like lots of companies are making lots of money right. and, and their foundations are rich right now. Right. So I Energy know. savings. But they, like I wasn't thinking of the funding positions. All right. We've got time to keep talking, um, and um, <laughs> and as we go through the budget process, you know that insight will be helpful. So thank you. Um, now to the financial forum. So just thought we'd talk through the agenda here and how we want to approach that. Right? We, we you know, typically it's 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 the it's the it's a preview um, of capital and you know. Um, operating budgets. Um, we'll look to give guidance that evening. Uh, we've got some other stuff. What else do we have on there for? I was looking at Bob's write up. Was that where the permanent building came? 
Yeah, and it's probably a pretty good chunk of time. Is tomorrow night like a 15, 20 minute? Yeah, or worth if you guys can watch um, something on, for the schools. And I, I think they would, they, they want to give a report to town meeting that'll be very bridged, but they wanted an opportunity either in September or October to do a larger presentation. And, do it in 30 minutes or maybe 45. For both town and school? Probably more like 45 minutes. And then that partly depends on how many questions you have. Yeah. Um, uh, they've finished going through all the schools pretty much inch by inch. And they've come up with a format and a very thick report of the condition of the schools, if you will, to be real simple. And they want to share that information with you uh, and with the community, but really with you know, the elected boards and FinCom primarily and then town meeting. Um, and they thought it would be uh, more important to do that now instead of in a year or two, given the you know, situation of the elementary schools and whatever else we found yeah. in the town. So they started the town walkthrough, right? Yeah, we did town hall Monday night. Okay. What was it you were recommending to watch? Uh, tomorrow night school committee. Oh, do one tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a time slot? Already for tomorrow? The Six meeting nine. starts at 7. For the presentation? Is it going to um, be first? The presentation might be closed at 7 30. It's after okay. public comment. For okay. So it's we have the first presenters. Okay. It sort of depends how quickly. And we can certainly send the presentation to you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is, it, is it in the, um, the traffic that was sent out? No, we were. We're Still going to, we wanted to make sure we had the final. We'll have handouts tomorrow night and then we'll update the final packet. It's probably like 10. Yeah, 10 slides. Well, can you share that with us? Sure. Also, noting in here, we're expecting an update on Turf 2 and elementary school space projects. Yeah, whatever capital projects. Part and we'll parcel of that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Is there a security update you wanted to do? Are we trying to do that for this one, or is that some, something else? Uh, we'll try. And I met briefly today, and we started discussing that. You know, we will. It's, it's a question of whether it's ready in October as opposed to some later date. Um, I think it's fair to get an update on all the capital projects, yeah. honestly. And my hope is that'll foster a conversation around kind of what we were having earlier with yeah. the community. What else needs to be included? And in it looks like it's going to be a healthy, you'll, you'll it's going to be a healthy agenda. Warrant articles yeah. Yeah. and the, the retirement board. But, you know, if you want them to visit, they, I'm sure, visit. Thoughts on that? It's going to be a big night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You want to start at 7? Right. Maybe. Right. And does it make sense maybe start early on to have the retirement board? You know, that was the discussion we are going to have today. Yeah. You know, historically, because a lot of you work in Boston, FinCom doesn't like to start till 7.30, but you can start at any time. You can start at 6, you can start at 7, whatever you want. Now, some of this is FinCom only business. Mm. Right. Um, so, in theory, you could do that at the beginning or the end of a financial form. You know, the retirement board presentation certainly could be heard by anyone, but it really is intended for instance. It's not a and mission. I, I think that's the COLA based presentation, not so much the bigger issue that yeah. we discussed tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, and if we're going to be projecting revenue and expenses, I feel like we should have that discussion yeah. before. Okay. So we could. So maybe seven, seven, mm -hmm. thirty, sort of. Yeah, we could start at seven. Really, you know, I hope for good community engagement, good community discussions. Getting into that at seven thirty allows people to get there. And so on. So. Andrew, do you have a waiting for the election meeting? Pretty much to get the elected boards there. Yes. It's hard to get everyone in the same place. I think he's talking about the retirement board. No, 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 that could, I'm sorry. That could, that, be a, that, that could be a separate meeting. Didn't the select board already see that? No. No. 
Not this year. It, we years just years ago. Yeah. yeah, I thought there it was, was a, just an art. I thought I remembered your presentation now as well. I, I feel like we've hit a lot on this, the retirement board, um, all the presentation that came out. Uh, hopefully everyone will have to see it, but um, if we can't talk about it this time, it might be worth it to talk about it before the next meeting if we have availability to do, to do so. Uh, that way it's not a four and a half hour um, uh, FinCon meeting and everyone has a you know, focus on when, when discussing. So, you know, they can't discuss it. Um, I mean, personally, I'm sort of comfortable. I kind of feel like I understand what the case is. I, I don't know if any if other folks feel like you have burning questions on the topic. I mean, if, we, if you ask me to vote tonight, I'm ready to, I'm, you know, I'm ready to vote on that one article. But um, I, I don't know if the rest of the committee feels the same way. I'm pretty comfortable with it. Um, I think we went a lot in depth last yeah. thing on being with that. And, yeah. um, like, like I said, I know they can't talk about it, but it's kind of pretty straightforward, so. Um, yeah, that's, that's on you, Eric. <laughs> 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 it wouldn't have a long presentation. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. Think of what other things you might accomplish in a second meet beforehand. Uh, to make it worthwhile. That by itself doesn't quite get there. Mm -hmm. I'll think about it, too. Yeah. You know, one thing that didn't make the agenda for tonight, it's my oversight, is um, that instructional motion. Oh, yeah. Um, Come from the town, or from the town meeting around unused, unused authorized debt. Yeah. Yeah, that's relatively straightforward. Do we have an article to rescind all of the outstanding for the, um, the tariffs? There's something in there, I forget the details. Yeah. There's two pieces, yeah, and uh, that's right. There was an old MWRA that we had. 460 for the MWRA and 900 for the light. And the 900 yep. is out yep. there for the light, which is the kind of the one that they're most interested yeah. in, is the light for the it, fields, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, lighting up the fields. I mean, so that was an IM from the last town meeting. I know they're not binding. Do we want to be in a position to go back to the next town meeting and respond to that? Yeah, that'd be great. So then, list. if so, we would have to have discussed that no yeah. later than the financial forum, right? Well, it has a, there. There is a warrant article for November mm -hmm. for rescinding debt, but not. I think the other part, if I remember right, was for you to have some kind of policy to decide whether or not they felt the policy yeah. was necessary. Right. Yeah, and that's your yeah, choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I think I provided um, at we the did. last meeting that we took this because we didn't have it in writing. And when I reached out to other communities to say, does anybody have a policy like this? Only one community responded. It was yeah. Stoughton. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it was like after five years or something, yeah. depending yeah. on the size of the debt authorization, mm -hmm. how long you could stay out there, and then they would need to revisit it at town meeting if they hadn't already. So. So I think the question came into play is would we, we kind of uh, assumed or um, actuated this, this monetary value and then the scope of set work changed mm -hmm. and then um, you can't go back to that same pool yeah. for a different scope of work. Um, and then how long do we take? It can stay there forever, but definitely until mm -hmm. that disappears or we create a policy to eliminate it once it's voted necessary to uh, eliminate them, that or rescind that, um, that value. So I don't, I mean, my personal take is I don't, I still think it's worth us that, you know, evaluating creating a policy, whether we cannot be, you know, utilize tokens or not as a starting point. Um, but for November, I mean, I think if we were to come back and say, there's a warrant article to address the ones that would be relevant right. in this time, we started discussing a policy, we, you know, expect to come back with, you know, more information or of the decision or what have you in April, I think is a sufficient response to the instructional motion. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, we're, yes, we're punting it, but we've met like twice since that town meeting, maybe mm -hmm. three times. Um, and and we're addressing the near term. There's not a lot of debt out there. Yeah. They're most, yeah. Mostly what's out there is new authorizations. Right. They're not old things out there. So. It's well, it's also an used. opportunity for education because you, I remember trying yeah. to make the point that night to say, I understand it's out there, but we still have to come back to you to spend it. And I think, I think people were really nervous that night, not really 
completely understanding that. Yeah. So it's a great opportunity to do some education. Mm -hmm. And it may point to a policy may not be needed because it was people feeling nervous that money could be spent without them. So like like borrowing behind. Yeah, exactly. So, so I, I agree, but I, I also think that even the people that are educated about that will rightly suggest that it does create confusion when you've got outstanding debt authorizations that we had no intent of using in the form in which they were originally authorized, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and when you when you know we constantly have the educational challenge, and when you've got outstanding debt authorizations that people don't really understand that they can't be used until we come and ask town meeting to authorize the borrowing and so so on and so forth, it does muddy the water when you're asking for new debt for new debt authoriz authorizations, for instance. So. Um, I, you know, I, I think it's still a fair point to say we should do what we can to clean that up whenever it's been, you know, whenever appropriate. Because, um, you know, I, I think it does go a little bit further than just the education point about the authorization doesn't equal spending or doesn't equal borrowing anyway. Right. So essentially, you're saying if, like in this example of the lighting, the portion of the scope got, got consumed by a different. Project, right? so when people see it coming up with budget, and that was what I was going to do. Yeah, what happened was there were five fields meant to fit into a million dollars. Right. I don't remember what the bids came in. 100,000 was put out to get good prices. Not all five could fit in the 900,000. Three of them could have. I can't remember if a fourth one could. I don't think so, but it was close. And uh, the then chair, John Halsey, and I just decided that's not what town meeting said, so we can't spend part of the money on part of the work. Mm -hmm. Just cancel it. Um, and I, I'm the one that suggested just leave the authorization because the need isn't gone, just the cost of it's gone. So kind of semantics, we could have got rid of it right away and then just re asked for the total. But I was thinking, you know, let's let the town decide what it wants to do. Maybe right. it wants to do something for 900000 in which case right. we don't need to ask. We just need to say do three fields or four fields. And add it to the or we want all five. Well, of course, the turf two is split off now. Right. When we do regularly clean up our debt authorizations and we send them on the regular, but this was something outside. But this, this was, was something a conscious that, decision not yeah, to do that. Yeah, I mean, right? because mm -hmm. this was something horse. that was voted at town meeting as something they wanted to do. We just didn't have enough to do the project. Yeah. And so we knew that it would be revisited at a later date. So I thought the policy could be as simple as um, reviewing with town meeting. Outstanding. Yeah. 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 I think that would be yeah. sufficient. Yeah. So once a year, it's just a checkbox. Oh, we need to do that. Mm. Right. Mm. Are we generally comfortable with the approach suggested that we can come back to in um, November and say, there's, there's a warrant article here for the immediate piece, but we'll, we'll come back in April with the, uh, we're still working on this, we'll come back in April on the policy. Do you want to do that as a report under Article and whatever it is, too, or do you want to just wait for the article itself and then say those things under reports because mm -hmm. it's something less specific? Or you could just give that discussion under the article of this goal. So you can think about that. Right. You just need to decide on meeting, just for the moderator. It's okay to do it during the article. I think it no, flows from It feels that. like it would connect connected. Yeah. Because they'd see the debt being recipient. And, and certainly, as the background, we can write that up so everyone read the thing before they get. Why don't we? Why don't we so just plan to do? I'll, I'll keep okay. thinking about it. We want to yeah, do okay. it with the article. Okay. Right, so where that leaves us is, if we have the retirement board in, we start at seven. It's going to be you know it's going to be a a, a robust night. I, you could think about sixty minutes for permanent building committee with questions. I'm sure there will be if the presentation is forty five. Um, to work through the, the you know the, the projections, uh, looking ahead at the next uh, fiscal year and all the discussions around capital. Again, hopefully we've got a good turnout and a healthy discussion there. Um, are we are we comfortable doing that all in one night, or do we feel the need for another meeting? There's four Wednesdays between now. And now. I think um, you can accomplish the things you you need to accomplish that night. What you may not be able to accomplish is things that you're going to want to accomplish sometime, such as having this discussion about capital mm. or community priorities and projects. Mm. But honestly, if you schedule that as an agenda item, you're not going to complete it, no matter how much time you give to it. Mm. So you could set that aside for the November uh, FinCom meeting, because it's not tied into the town meeting mm -hmm. specifically. 
Eric, do we have um, <coughs> free cash guidance as an agenda item? Shouldn't that be an agenda item for this one? Um, that, yeah, operating yeah. budget guidance, yeah. Yeah, okay. But now you usually come forward with suggestions. Should we talk about that? Can we make sense tonight? So that we well, often you come to financial forum saying, okay, this is sort of what we recommend for free cash, and then that's sort of our starting point, whether we should discuss it, come up with what the starting point is. It's a million and a quarter, quarter, right? I know, I'm sure he did. Yeah, yeah. 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 but it's pretty early. How do you want to solve the, let's forget the COLA part of the retirement, that's a different presentation. How do you want to solve the, um, you know, I'm not sure whose choice that is. I mean, I have to submit you a budget, but you have to agree with it, and then town meeting has to agree with it. So I assume that, let's just play this out, and you know, the 20% increase goes through for argument's sake, and you agree with it, and then town meeting doesn't. Whatever the retirement board has wanted and decided doesn't matter because town meeting said no. But I don't know, understand really what the fallback is to that. Mm -hmm. If they don't support the pension number as it's presented to them by FinCom or FinCom doesn't support the one I give them, what happens? I've never seen that happen. Since yeah, so we need to talk about that. Um, I don't really know because let's say you, you decide I think if you decide it's easier, because then we have time to work it out before town meeting. Um, but if, let's just pretend you, you, you agree, and then town meeting says, no, uh, half a million less on pension is the number we're going to pass. You know, fine with me, but I don't know how that affects I wonder all the if we math. would have to have the actuary rework our funding schedule. I would assume. And then we'd have to be accepted, be reported with PARAC. Uh, that's what I'm guessing. I assume, it's, but I, I assume that that's okay from town meeting and, and these folks. It's just yeah. a retirement board challenge. Mm -hmm. I but think you should think about I'll, that. I can ask some questions about that. Is it, yeah. And then they're going to come back, and at the very least, they're going to say, since you paid less, your final date's going to be further out, and your next year percentage jump is going to be larger. I'm yeah. sure those mm -hmm. two things would happen, which right. is fine. So I should know this, but that also unbalances the budget. Correct. So what happens in that case? How, do, we, do we have to immediately identify the offsetting revenue, or what does that look like? In the case of the expense, right? It would be expense because you'd be pulling. Right. Well, you're spending less money, and I would assume you'd use less free cash, but it's oh, a good question. Yeah, an yeah. offset between free cash and expense. Percentage increase. Right. I think the delivery of that, too, is going to be the um, part of that thing between the select board and the com will come up with some mutually understood answer, but I think when it comes in front of the town, how it how that's delivered with the 2040 uh, C requirement, mm -hmm. uh, that makes a big difference. And if, if you want this to be part of your first meeting with the retirement board, it certainly can be to have a much fuller discussion about the options and the consequences. Mm -hmm. Better to have it then than try to figure out what to do in April or May, I suppose. And that, but that just to keep in mind, that's a very separate topic from this COLA thing. That's, that's a warrant that's different. I don't want to target to discuss that because that whole COLA thing is wrapped into this number. Well, yeah. I know it's not yeah. it's like it's 20 instead of 24 yeah. percent or whatever. But in your package, I did give you the funding schedule with the COLA mm -hmm. and without the COLA, mm -hmm. so you can see what the numbers mm -hmm. would look like. So you just, you know, use, you know, if you're looking at it, you can see the difference. You know, and know what it would be if the goal was there or not, you know, the increase. There's definitely no reason you have to agree with what I've said at all. Just my opinion. It's certainly not typical that we're asking town meeting to go up 21% on the assessment, so it's yeah, hard to know what's going to happen. Honestly. Yeah, but let's say that you know, instead of going up a million, you say half a million is reasonable. Let's just do that, okay? Suppose you then cut off the 250 of extra free cash, and then what do you do with the other 250? Mm -hmm. Does it flow through to the operating budget? In which case, mm -hmm. the town and the schools would be happy, and, but that's you're building a base of a budget. Or do you send it to some other purpose, or do you cut free cash by all 500? These are things that it would be good for you to discuss sooner than later, um, just to make sure you understand the options and you have some agreement. 
kind of like a plan B. I'm certainly fine. Anything you want to do is fine with me. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, the pension doesn't, can't go down, so I'm protected there. But I, I, I know, this whole thing so far, because I challenge, I challenge with what's the stake in the ground? What are you sort of setting that you think is right? How much for cash to use or how much right. percent increase we want to give the operating budgets? What we think retirement should be, it's sort of what's the state in the ground that's going to have that ripple effect? Yeah. Well, often I look at what the increase, what a reasonable increase is in the operating budget. Yeah. You know, to me, the increase in the pension by this amount or any amount is, is like putting money in a savings account. It's not spending it. It's money you have to set aside at some point. And we're doing it now instead of later, or we're doing it faster instead of slower. So it's a way to not spend money. It's the way I look at it. I, I do understand that some of that's free cash, which may not otherwise happen. And there's also that putting the money in now gives it that more time to earn, <laughs> earn money on that money. Right. Yeah. It also is in 2029, I think it was the day. Mm -hmm. Also has a major drop off based mm -hmm. on price action at 2029. So um, and, and let's assume the market, or let's assume yeah. after that point, uh, the market starts to break a little bit. Um, yeah, actually, like it, it gives us some wiggle room yeah. um, versus sure. having that larger amount that we have to carry from 2029 to 2040. Or 20, I think it was uh, 39 or 38 is what the uh, lower percentage you know, brought us up to. It, it's a discussion that, in my opinion, it would be far better if FinCom had some strong opinion on it, one way or the other, whatever it is, because it's going to be hard. It's a hard concept mm -hmm. to explain to a large group, whatever the large group is. So, by when, ideally, would we have reached um, that opinion? January, uh, when budgets start getting closer to being finalized. Mm -hmm. Sooner is fine. Mm -hmm. Select boards December, school committees January. Um, select board will see benefits as you know, specifically. I guess they could see because we'd likely use free cash as the. Um, well, you'll decide in October right. about the free cash, and if right. you know, just you say a million, yeah. I'm right. going to be all right, Sharon. How do we not do that? Yeah, twenty-four percent increase in pensions. <laughs> uh, you know, which is again, which is fine. This is an unusual situation that you're going to have to think through. Yeah. So if we agree, if we, if we agree to the 1.25 at the financial forum, but then come back later and, and discuss this and reach a firm opinion that we don't agree with the 20 percent, then how does that work? Um, then the, 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 the free, other free cash just you know if, if it's redirected to the operating form, budget, you've yeah. agreed to one. Five, but it would be based on all the assumptions, whatever you're presented with that night. Yeah. And if you want to change those assumptions, yeah. you know, and that happens, like special ed goes up or down, yeah. usually up, um, then the default is more or less free cash. But it, it's again, it's good to discuss all those in advance so everyone's clear. I, I think it would benefit you to get a presentation from the retirement board or share on both sides, on, on the actual obligation itself and what the ups and downs are. So and for that next And let them say the town manager is spending like a drunken sailor. We know that he'd be well enough to absorb a 20%. See, I don't think the concept is that hard for people to understand. Okay. It's, I, I actually okay. don't. I think they... It's not really it. money. It's hard to grasp, sort of. Right, but it's... But it's not spent. It's what, while you have it now, which we all agree, we've got the opportunity just the concern of this putting additional um, stress in future operating budgets. Is I also think it's yeah. weird that we can't ever go down. It absolutely you can't does. taper it off because yeah. you well, might, if you were managing something on your own, you might seek to taper it yeah. off and we yeah. can't do that. We could keep it flat though. Yeah. We could keep it flat and stretch it out. Which is sort of in that yeah. And it does naturally go down, but yeah. So, but even in that, we could theoretically go flat. Not that we right. probably would, but it's year over year. I mean, it would it would extend the timeline. It would definitely extend the timeline. Yeah, time for, for sure. Yeah. But, but I'm saying. It just can't be less than the year before. Yeah. Yeah. And absolute dollars. Yeah. Right. So keep going something less than four. Or three is almost in that up uh, in terms of what it does the rest of the budget so that people feel a little bit better about that they have the flexibility because i think people get worried about locking in on something yeah yeah, yeah. 
So I think the concept of doing it while we have money makes total sense to people agree. People in town. Yeah, and, and obviously I, I agree with that. And the last comment, just like the last comment you made, is why I didn't think 30 was a good idea, about 30%. It's like let's dis you know decrease the discount rate from seven and a half to seven and a quarter. Oh, it costs that much. Uh -huh. Okay, it was let's an obnoxious number. That was a big number. Right, right. right. It's like well, you know, again, if it was one time, we could do that and then just change our minds, but you can't. So, yeah, the concept is exactly what we're talking about with the sustainability fund too. It's, right. It's the, the all the only difference is we actually have a plan, but. Uh, yeah, we don't have tangible numbers, so um, yeah. I think everyone in this room is somewhat <laughs> agreeing so far on the concept of whether the numbers work in the 10 right. Year. All right, so we'll certainly discuss that in our November meeting. We, we're, we, we've decided to have the retirement board come into the finance forum. Yeah, why don't... Um, what day is the finance forum again? 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. Why don't we plan to start at 7? Agreed. And that would be the COLA discussion. We'd start with COLA discussion. Yeah. Okay, so you don't want to have a separate meeting because I think if you want a full presentation. Well, the presentation. I think we're just concerned. Um, no, but if you did a but separate. If you, if you do a, a separate pre October 16th uh, meeting well, and the retirement okay. board can you. make it, then you knock that off that night. You, you take it away from the 16th. And then you're not on a time constraint if there's a lot of questions. You know, why don't I coordinate what your availability is after I hear what the retirement board's availability is? And then you can decide whether to have a meeting or not. I mean, if you only get five or six people, then maybe it's not work. But if all nine of you yeah. make it, throw some dates up. Is anybody that just, it's just not going to work at any of those next four? It's, it's going to have to be after the 28th, because that's the next time the select board meet to. Yeah, because they have now. to approve yeah. the no, Oh, the other one too? Oh, yes. lost oh. session. Yeah. It's just after a disclosure of a, a it could have potential it. conflict. She, she or can't discuss things until you give her permission to affect that yeah. part. Yeah, okay. So it'll have to be the second or the ninth? Yeah. If it's a Wednesday, but yeah. It could be another day if you guys are available. You want to meet at six o'clock on the six on the financial floor at six thirty. <laughs> Fine. Can we bring dinner in? Can we bring dinner? No, maybe Can we brown bag that. financial farm? I'll People bring a big cooler of cold drinks at least. <laughs> Restrictions on what's in there. We have a ramp in here, right? Where's it going to be? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get up. All right, well, we, yeah, we, thought we, we could start at 6 and just have it be at night, or we could we could make another meeting. Breakfast. To me, it doesn't make a difference. I probably prefer Okay. Right. We'll find out what the options are, and then you can choose. It's okay to have this discussion. Yeah. Anyway. It's just logistics. All right. Because we have to be people can fill it up. Yeah. We also have to kind of find out what the retirement. Yeah, we'll ask yeah. first what they can do, and yeah. then we'll see what happens. But we'll we'll shoot for the second or the ninth, be it the Wednesdays. So I'm sorry. What did you say? Doodle? Did she do Yeah, she did. We just got a dog and it's in doodle. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Snickerdoodle. Part cheese doodle. Yeah. <laughs> Snickerdoodle. <laughs> Spicy. Yeah. She's spicy. All right. Um, next to the agenda item was just the liaisons review. The, the reason I put that on there was a question came up of whether or not the committee had a liaison to the Board of Health. Um, I guess historically we haven't just because they don't have really any finance related business where it's, it's been needed. Does the committee feel that we need one? Would like to revisit that or, or no? Or any other board that, that we didn't include? In what we oh yeah, like about. the Climate Advisory Committee. Yeah. Like we comfortable with going and hanging out. Oh, yeah. Any of you can attend any of those yep. meetings. Exactly. Just yep. don't be a quorum unless you have one of them. And it's three as a quorum? Five. Five, sorry. Five. Okay. Up to five of us could be there before we get in trouble. Great. Up to four. Awesome. Up to four. Five yeah. yeah. more in trouble. That's a lot of us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we went through we we got through what we needed to on the financial form in terms of what the I think we did. Yeah, I had okay. sorry, yeah, I had um you know, the, the, the so starting with the 
September, October, too. We were a little more generous with this one, maybe. Yeah. So they could squeeze it a little. If we meet in October, we could take up that instructional motion, but yeah, we'll see. Any other business before we get to minutes? Questions, comments? Anyone? Minutes. Did I say anything bad in these minutes? <laughs> you leaked a bunch of trade secrets. Oops. Motion to accept the minutes of July 31st as presented in the packet. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Six zero. It was seven zero. She had two hands. That's <laughs> us. Motion to adjourn. Second. All, all, all in favor. Oh, you were just voting. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> all those in favor. That's good. You have a 6-0. Thank you very much.